The story of photography begins anywhere. It begins here with a small diary, handwritten, a recipe on how to prepare a piece of paper, expose it to light and fix the image that results. It's dated the 5th of October 1833 and the man who wrote it was William Henry Fox Talbot. Fox Talbot's diary and many of his earliest photographs were gifted to the British Library in 2006. Late last year they went on show there as the centrepiece of an exhibition on photography's first footsteps in the 19th century. But who was Fox Talbot and how did he make that all-important first discovery? The optical principles on which photography relies and the chemical principles of light sensitive chemistry had been quite well understood for a considerable period before but it was bringing them together and then that revolutionary step of actually fixing that image and Talbot's process of course formed the basis of most later photography because it produced a negative which could be infinitely reproduced in printed form. One of the most astonishing things about the new technology is how 19th century photographers tried almost everything. Explore the British Library's early photography collections and pretty much any genre that you can think of is here. But above all, it was human faces that photographers wanted to capture and it was by taking portraits that they found their first commercial success. I mean, Baudelaire is, is a good example of this um, argument that went on about photography as an art form or not. He was continually contemptuous of it as a means of artistic expression as far as he was concerned, or indeed in his writings as far as he was concerned, it was simply a mechanical means of producing or duplicating reality. It wasn't an artistic tool. Although his response to this photograph, he said it was perfect or as perfect as a photograph could be. And he was photographed several times, wasn't he? So he's not averse to the idea of being No, photographed. he was photographed numerous times and no doubt was aware of the publicity value of photographs being made available to the public. If photography caught the 19th century in all its heat and hectic energy, other photographers set out to capture dying ways of life, a world away from the mills and the shipyards, deep in England's rural backwaters. The images work in relation to a text, so you have a, an image showing something and an often quite detailed descriptive text, so in that sense they're photographs that are about giving information, recording a way of life that's disappearing, but are also great works of art in their own right, and he uses the platinum process which gives a beautiful gradation of soft tones in the print which is a wonderful evocation of the light of Norfolk. This show is full of sensational images but in a way one of my favourites is this one here which is tucked away in a quiet little corner of the gallery. Now it doesn't grab you the first time you look at it, it's just apparently a very quiet scene of people on the beach relaxing in probably a rather chilly British summer but the interesting thing is it feels like a slice of life life as it was actually being lived it doesn't feel staged, though possibly it was. There's another reason it's interesting too, and it's this. Within 30 years of this image being taken, a firm called Kodak will be making the first cheap cameras for everyday use. In other words, the people in this picture wouldn't just be being photographed, they'd be taking photographs themselves. But that's a whole other story.